Hi, my name is Rob Scott from UC Today and welcome to our monthly Microsoft Teams news update. And just before we get started, I'd just like to give EPOS a quick shout out for sponsoring today's news update. So as always, I'm joined by Tom Abuthnot, UC Solutions Architect, Microsoft Certified Master and MVP. Welcome, Tom. Yeah, hey, Rob. How's it going? Very good. Very good. Very excited, actually. Uh, Microsoft Ignite. Uh, well, yeah, just around the, the corner now. Yeah, oh, well. just by the time this video comes out, it's probably Microsoft Night week. So absolutely, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to that. How about yourself? Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, good good news in the UK and that we're slowly plan to roll out of lockdown now. So that's very exciting. And yeah, on the tech front, Ignite, we say this will drop just before Ignite. So there's going to be lots of exciting stuff there. We'll talk at the end about some sessions I'm looking forward to. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm actually looking forward to uh, the mixed reality um, experience that they bring into the show this year as well. So that should be quite cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about. And I think a lot of cultural stuff to talk about as well as IT at that show. Indeed, indeed. But you know, before we jump onto Ignite, uh, we will get to that at the end. But uh, that there's a whole, you know, uh, rook of news again this uh, month. Tom, um, you know, what's been happening from your perspective? Yeah, so the absolute big news is is Viva, which is Microsoft's new uh, employee experience platform. So that's a new kind of name or a brand they're putting around various different experiences. So you don't buy Viva as a thing, but Viva is more like a family of offerings all around this whole theme of we're all remote. How do you drive culture? How do you drive cohesiveness? How do you drive training, learning, communications? And it, I think it's a real big gap that needs to be addressed, to be fair. Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing quite a lot of it in the news, actually, and speaking to a lot of brands, employee experience is really becoming more and more important, especially with the whole kind of lockdown kind of experience that we've all had and homeworking, et cetera. But uh, certainly, yeah, a, a rising trend. I think Microsoft are doing the right thing there. Yeah, it's a really hot topic. I think what's interesting is I've been doing the research around it and lots of the articles and comments I'm hearing about it are coming from uh, HR officers and, and HR consultants and Microsoft have really broken through out of the IT people to be like this is not IT yes it's a bunch of tools but this is a conversation beyond IT which is what they're keeping trying to do is like this is not deploy Yammer this is way bigger than that yeah but interesting to see how it pans out because it's not available yet is it yeah, well, there's different components. So there's four main things. So there's Viva connections, and that's kind of your like uh, bring your employees together with with news and communications. There's Viva insights, which is kind of your uh, analytics about how your employee experience is, not in a big brothery way, but in a like how are people engaged. And that, that's always a hot topic at the moment about how much reporting on people's experience you want to do. Um, there's learning, which is your classic learning portal. Um, it looks like it's mostly pulling in third-party learning content into a centralized portal. And then there's Viva Topics, which is uh, an AI into like find your experts, find the conversations going on inside your business. So th they're all in various stages of preview or planned. Um, but again, Viva is not one thing. It's more like a here's a, a bunch of tools to use with your organization to get the most out of the people to empower the people that kind of thing yeah interesting interesting so it'd be, it'd be, you know I'm, I'm quite excited by it you know i certainly want to I don't, generated... it, I don't know whether I can see it. <laughs> yeah, I mean? yeah, it's generated a lot of press and a lot of conversations. I think, like everything in the cloud, it will be an evolving story. It's like here's the vision, here's where we see it going. As they roll it out into preview, they'll they'll tweak and change. But I think the most important thing is this is Microsoft breaking out of this is an IT conversation into this is a culture conversation. Yes, we're providing the tooling, but they really don't want to talk to. IT about deploying this. They want to talk to whoever is the digital transformation or the HR person. It's, it's beyond IT. Yeah, interesting. Hey, great stuff. So next, we said we'd talk about satin. Tell us more. Yeah, so, so we go from uh, business conversation to very, very techie conversation. So this is cool, though. Yeah. This is the brand new codec developed by 
Microsoft. So for for a long time, uh, sorry, it's a level set, I guess. Codec is the thing that encodes your audio or your video, sends it over the internet. So the better the codec, the better performance you get. Um, and it's it's an ongoing conversation in the UC community about who deals the best with bad networks. And increasingly, because we're all using mobile, 4G, 5G, like that can be really spotty. So having good codecs is equivalent to having a good user experience. Um, so Microsoft bought Skype way back in the day. They inherited the, the Silk codec, which was Skype developed. They inherited a whole bunch of clever people in that acquisition as well. And Silk is the the next gener. Oh, sorry, Satin is the next generation of that codec. So they're they're throwing lots of AI cleverness at it. Um, but the punchline is you're getting better voice quality in more challenging network conditions. Um, so Microsoft have a great blog where they compare the two and it's, it's night and day the, both the, the the ability to hear individual words but also to keep it wideband which I think is a big problem in you know meeting fatigue at the moment all the audio is pretty poor so having codecs that can counteract those network conditions is really important that's a great move for Microsoft isn't it and especially in this climate as you say you know where audio uh, you know has such a big impact on the you know the, the remote experience so uh really you know hats off to microsoft for doing that at this time especially yeah and, and it's a it's a very technical thing but it's a way to differentiate in the way that users understand they don't understand why but if they do a meeting on a certain platform and they have one experience and a different platform and they have another um that you know we've seen this with zoom conversations lots of people are like oh but zoom is just better and it's like it boils down to often how we deal with bad network conditions uh, so this is a big step forward it's already running in teams now for for meeting experiences so you can definitely check it out excellent okay next up we said we'd talk about the fluent version of teams desktop and browser ui rolling out soon yeah so so uh credit to tony redman who did a really good blog on this so this is just microsoft every now and again have different UI languages or experiences. They're constantly trying to bring the Office 365 and 365 experience together in terms of look and feel. And this is Teams kind of adding a bunch of iconography and experience stuff that is in line with that philosophy. Um, so not a massive change in the grand scheme of things, but for user experience wise, some really nice new icons and look and feels um, which are rolling out at the moment. So we can expect to see that sometime soon. Is that a country by country kind of thing? That's how that normally happens. Yeah, rolling rolling across different tenants at different times, as is yeah. the cloud, um, just just yeah, on some some timeline, but you'll start to see it appear. Um, you can switch early into preview mode, and Microsoft have this new preview mode, which end users can now flip themselves into. Um, so you can go and get preview mode and get it early. Um, and, and again, another thing about the cloud that's interesting is these changes just happen. Whereas before, you know, the IT culture was you can't just change icons. We have to train the users for three weeks first. I mean, this is the cloud now. The updates just roll. Excellent. Ah, looking forward to that. It's always uh, something nice to look at. Uh, next up, we said we talk about um, the, I suppose, the, the Outlook desktop client. You can You can do something quite clever with um, starting a new meeting is that correct tell us more yeah this is interesting so so one of the things that skype always had was a meet now button so there's obviously a, a culture of some people that don't pre-schedule meetings but need a meeting space um, and it, it's interesting because you can obviously have a peer-to-peer -peer call and escalate to a meeting, but they want to generate a meeting URL and share it. Um, so that made its way to Teams desktop client. Uh, and now that ability as a button has been put in Outlook. Uh, so you can hit one button, it generates a meeting, and then you can have people join that meeting. Uh, the, the thing I thought that was interesting here is this shows how dominant Outlook is as an interface for most people, because you can already do this in the Teams client. It, it, in my head, if you're going to start a meeting, you'd start Teams and hit the Meet Now button if you wanted to. But obviously, because meeting, uh, sorry, Outlook is front and centre for so many people, adding that button probably makes it more discoverable, more visible, more used. Uh, so I've no doubt Microsoft are looking at the analytics, say, oh, look, if we put a button here that says Meet Now, more people are likely to click that to generate a meeting. I'm just trying to think about that for a moment, but... What's the difference between using Outlook desktop client, going to 
you know, the, the calendar and just inviting a couple of people to a meeting and say, like, you know, meet, let's meet now. Yeah, yeah, this is the funny thing, right? So, so that's pro- you're probably thinking the way a lot of people think is, well, I will schedule a meeting for the exact time we're in. They will get an email. We'll wait a few seconds. They'll they'll join on the email. Yeah. Um, th- this is very similar, except from you hit meet now and you're literally dropped into a meeting and given the details to share. Um, so so it's just I just think it's it's the same you end up at the same spot it's just how users interpret their experience maybe if they've been using a third meet a third party platform that gave them a meeting space by default they think about it as a space not a scheduled event so um yeah yeah, but important enough to give it its own dedicated button yeah well the bus have some feedback from uh, quite a lot of people on that one but uh one thing i always think is missing from microsoft teams is that kind of personal meeting room space where you, you know you just have a fixed url I know Zoom and, and a few other of them kind of big video conferencing and meeting providers offer that where you kind of got this ver- almost kind of fixed meeting space that you can just share with people. And Yeah, your yeah. room. Yeah, like we, we saw that a lot um, on migrating from third party platforms or other platforms, sorry, to Skype is people would have it in their email signature, like join my room, one, two, three, four, five, six, and all this URL. Yeah. Um, yeah, from a from a security standpoint that's super interesting because you you're sharing a permanent space that people could conceptually camp in so it was always hated from a security standpoint from a user experience um we heard a lot from like execs love it because they're on a mobile in the airport and they're like okay everybody jump on my bridge right now we're going to make this thing happen um so there's a tension there between user experience and security but yeah so it's it's an interesting feature yeah i can see the security angle definitely and i think that that does make sense and it is a convenient thing again, so it's not a big deal, is it? I mean, it's not like I, you know, I crave for that feature, but uh, you know, it's just a nice to have. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, other platforms have it, so clearly some people do want it for sure. Super. So next, we said we talk about Microsoft Teams um, meetings. Uh, the number's gone up. Is that correct? Uh, this is actually Teams, so the number of people oh, in sorry. Teams. Uh, yeah, the meetings are going up too. Actually, that's that's been been announced but this is um moving the number of people you can have in an individual team up to twenty five thousand. so uh, uh, again this is an interesting one from from my point of view because what's the collaboration scenario where you need twenty five thousand people all in the same space uh, i would say that's that's enterprise social that's yammer um but clearly the demand is there for these scenarios in large enterprises so uh, now pushing up to 25,000 members in a single team wow 25,000 people i mean that's yeah i i can't imagine what that would actually be like i think my my screen would probably <laughs> well yeah uh, and and you have lots of controls to make it only owners can post here re- threads can't be replied to you can lock it all down into becoming more or less a broadcast channel um but it, i don't know how much this is pushing technical barriers for technical barriers sake and how much this is big customers wanting it um, but yeah i would do it very uh very carefully if i was building a team that big and very controlled because it will just end up being a, either so big it's not used or so big it's just permanent noise well, I wonder whether you can call everyone because we often get uh, someone just by mistake, you know, pressing the call button. It rings everyone in the group. So could- yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's GA yet, but there, there, there is a UI experiment where they've added a prompt. Are you sure you want to call this group? Because that, that definitely happened. Are you sure you want to ring 25,000 people? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, the, it's like the reply all problem. This is the 2021 version of that. Yeah, exactly. Good. So next up, we so let's delve into a little bit of PowerShell. What's happened there? Yeah. So so I personally love PowerShell. I think editing and controlling configuration via command line and script is much more controllable and auditable than messing about with the UI. Um, but it seems like that philosophy is not always shared with Microsoft. Like like the UI, the the web control panel comes first, and PowerShell is come second. But we're seeing now as we march on to Skype Business Online being being killed soon, um, all the Skype Online PowerShell has now fallen into the Teams PowerShell module. Uh, so, so previously you would control some things through Skype Online, some voice elements of Teams, and now that PowerShell is folded into Microsoft Teams PowerShell. And I think it's just another, another thing getting tidied up and done as, as, as SFBO is gonna get killed. So no, no change in how your 
uh, you use the PowerShell, but if you want to control voice elements, you only need the PowerShell module now for, for Teams. Fantastic. So, yeah, a bit of housekeeping, tidying things up. I like it. I like it. Good. Um, next, well, finally, we said we'd talk about Microsoft Ignite. Um, if you're watching this video, and it's hopefully uh, Microsoft Ignite week now, um, but, you know, some of the highlights we said uh, we'd look at or just mention um Tom, what's uh, top of your list? Yeah, so there's there's a whole bunch of good sessions and there's lots of good uh, roundtables and table talks. But in terms of the headline sessions for Teams and Modern Workplace, um, so there's a hybrid workspace one from uh, Jared Sparrow, which is the uh, corporate vice president of Modern Workplace. So that's one to look out for. That'll be kind of the, the, the keynote of the, the Modern Workplace experience. Uh, there is a latest innovation with Microsoft Teams session. Uh, I would definitely look out for that if you care about Teams because that's going to be the, the the classic rolling out of like, here's all our new shiny stuff around Teams. And then there's a dedicated session to secure and compliant collaboration with Microsoft Teams. And I think already, I mean, we'll talk about Ignite after the event, but you can see lots of the tone here is about uh Teams is better, not just because it's feature-wise better, but because we have this massive uh, cloud of compliance and identity management and security and audit. So I think this is a smart move from Microsoft because this is, this is differentiating Teams, not just on we have crazy clever backgrounds and other products have crazy clever backgrounds and we can do 10,000 people in a meeting and they can do 10,000 people in a meeting. It's like, well, yeah, those are table stakes, but what about security, compliance, governance, control, because that's where Microsoft really shine. Fantastic. I'm really excited to see what, what comes through for Microsoft at Ignite this year. Uh, thanks for that, Tom. Perfect. Um, and we will be doing uh, an Ignite roundup piece um, just after the show, so do tune in for that as well. Um, on the events front, there is one more event I'd like to mention, Tom, uh, if that's okay. We've got uh, the CX Today launch event uh, starting in, on the 17th of March, 2021. And the reason I mention it is actually because there's a, a building a contact center with Microsoft Teams session at that event uh, that's featuring Landis Technologies, Luware, and Geomant. So we've got a we, we only recorded that yesterday and it's, it was a great round table, all talking about how to get started with you know, a Microsoft Teams based contact center solution. So, yeah, uh, that's a really that's a really knowledgeable group you've got there. Both uh, Matt and uh, the Leeware guys know everything there is to know about Teams contact center. So that sounds like a great panel. Yeah, it was a good session. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, and that's it from us. Uh, so if you've enjoyed today's session, please subscribe to UC Today News and give this video a quick share on social. It's always appreciated. And if you're a Microsoft Teams fan and want to be part of the conversation, you can join. Tom or myself on LinkedIn and Twitter. Our social links are in the description. So I'm Rob Scott from UC Today, and we'll be back again next month. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. Cheers, everybody.